The Visitors from the Future. Read this story to learn how Ruby and her friend Ritu encountered one such time traveler. Somebody has been stealing things from her office for some time now, and as the security officer, the responsibility fell on Anita. Anita was getting angry and frustrated. I have tried everything in my power, but somehow the thief still manages to enter and escape," said Anita. "The most frustrating thing is that nobody has been able to notice anything." Both Ruby and her father kept quiet. Ruby knew that her mother was frustrated, but she did not know what to do about it. "Anita, where is your watch?" Anita's father asked. Oh no! I forgot it in the office," replied Anita. "Do not worry, mother. I will go and get it back," said Ruby. She was happy to have something to do. "Do not go alone, Ruby. Take your friend Ritu with you," said Ruby's dad. This is how Ruby and Ritu found themselves in front of Anita's office gate. The office was located in an old colonial style building with gardens and separate parking. It was already dark and few of the outside lights were on. The lights did not cover the whole area and there were more patches of darkness than light. There were shadows everywhere. The whole area gave a chilling effect. Creepy remarked Ritu They approached the guard who opened the office for them and both the girls entered The hall was dark The light coming out of the caretaker's office was the only light in it The girls started walking towards the caretaker's office when they heard a noise behind them They turned around and saw the door of one of the cabins open two shadowy figures appeared they looked like children except that their mismatched heads were glowing red as the friends watched the two figures entered another cabin and disappeared what are the children doing in the office at this time said ruby are you sure that they were children whispered ritu did you look at their heads they were sort of glowing come on said ruby what else can they be are you scared yes ritu sheepishly replied here i will show you that there is nothing to fear said ruby ruby slowly walked towards the cabin in which the figures had entered Ritu followed. Ruby flung open the door and switched on the lights. There was a sudden brightness and it took few seconds for Ruby to look around. There was nobody in the cabin. Stationery was lying on some of the tables. Few chairs had fallen over. Ruby's watch was still there, but there was no sign of the mysterious figures. Ritu approached the windows and checked. All of them were locked from inside. They were here, whispered Ritu with fear in her voice. Both of us saw them enter, and all the windows are locked. They have to be ghosts. Yes, I saw two figures entering the cabin, said Ruby. No, they cannot be ghosts. Ghosts have no need to steal. They are real persons. But real persons do not disappear from closed cabins," said Ritu, her face white with fear. "Did you hear that?" "Yes, I heard it," replied Ruby. "There is water running somewhere in the building." With this. Ruby switched off the lights and walked towards the washrooms. Ritu thought about staying back, but 
Being with Ruby was better than being alone in the dark hallway. The noise is coming from the men's washroom, said Ritu. We are not allowed to go in. Come on, said Ruby. Do you think there are men using the washroom at this time of the night? Ritu grudgingly accepted the argument. They crept through the open doorway and looked around the corner. There was a shadowy figure bent over the wash basin, washing its face. His head looked normal and it was no longer glowing. Ruby looked around and saw a large roundish glowing object on the table in one corner. Oh no, said Ritu. That thing has taken its head off. Do not be silly, said Ruby. What is he washing at the wash basin if his head is in the corner? It looks more like a helmet. What should we do now? Asked Ritu. Ruby switched on the lights of the washroom and said, This. There was a golden-haired slender boy washing his face over the wash basin. He had blue eyes and his skin was yellowish brown. He was wearing white cargo pants and blue sneakers. He had rolled up the sleeves of his leather jacket. He raised his head and looked at the girls and then passed them towards his helmet. Who are you? asked Ritu. She was no longer afraid. Stanley, the boy replied without removing his eyes from the helmet. What are you doing here? Where are you from? asked Ruby. Give me back my headgear, said Not where, but when. Nope, replied Ruby. No chance. First answer our questions. You scared me. What are you doing in my mother's office? This is my home, replied Stanley. Your mother's office, 2017. My home, 3057. Do you think I was born yesterday? Said Ritu. You are telling me that you are from the future? Yup. I wanted to see how my home looked, like in the past. Stanley replied. Now give me back my helmet and I will leave. Not so fast, said Ruby. You have still not told us what you were doing here. Where are your friends? We saw two of them. Back, replied Stanley. Back where? They entered the classroom, but they did not leave, said Ruby. Yes, added Ritu. I checked the windows. All of them were locked from inside. They simply disappeared. There is an escape key in there, said Stanley, pointing towards the helmet. Oh, that is how we were able to catch you. Rule number one, said Stanley. You must always wear the helmet. I broke the rule. By the way, what are you doing here at night? I came here to take my mother's watch back, said Ruby, looking pointedly at Stanley. Before it was stolen. Not stolen, said Stanley. Not good to steal. Nothing should be taken from time and space. But some people break the rules. You are really from future, said Ritu. Do you have a time machine or something? Yup, replied Stanley. We have time machines everywhere in the future. We can use them to travel wherever we want. We always make these trips at night, but something we make mistakes like we did tonight. Few of us steal small things for memory. Things that are no longer available in the future. Do you want to know a secret? Oh yes, replied Ritu. Promise not to tell anyone, asked Stanley. Both the girls promised. 
You know the stories about ghosts and haunted places, said Stanley. These ghosts are simply people from the future. This is why these ghosts are only seen during nights and they vanish during daytime. Now be nice and give me back my helmet. Not on your life, buddy, said Ritu. There are like millions of things that I want to know. There was a crash outside and voices. Ritu, are you there? Ruby? It's my father. He has come searching for us. Gasped Ritu. Quickly, Ruby, take the helmet. Ruby took the helmet. Just then, Ritu's father entered the washroom, accompanied by Anita and the office guard. What are you girls doing in here? What took you so long? We were worried, he said. He looked around and saw Stanley standing in the washroom. Stanley waved at him. Who are you? said the guard. I have never seen you here before. Things are getting stolen from this office, said Anita. Call the police. No, mother, said Ruby. You must not call the police. He is not a thief. Then, what is he doing here at this time of night? Said Ritu's father. Ruby tossed the helmet to Stanley. Stanley caught it in its arms. Then he made a dash towards the hall. The adults tried to stop him, but he slipped past them. He opened the nearest door and disappeared inside. The adults ran after him, but they could not find anyone in the cabin. But he could not have disappeared, exclaimed Ruby's mother. Yes, he can, said Ritu. He was a ghost in reality, wasn't he, Ruby? Oh, yes, agreed Ruby. They are all ghosts.